partial square u partial x is approximated by the finite difference operator ui plus 1 plus ui minus 1 minus 2ui divided by delta x squared. And then we worked out the truncation error. And if you remember, we wrote down ui plus 1 over delta x squared, ui minus 1 over delta x squared, and the minus 2ui over delta x squared, and minus partial square u partial x square. So this formula, if I put a plus over here, is the error of that approximation. Right? So this is equal to tau. And how did we figure out how large or how small tau is? We did an expansion over Taylor series. Right? We expanded what is the term that contains ui. So for example, this is just a ui. This is also just a ui. This is minus 2 ui over delta x squared. This is 0. So that cancel out to be 0. We also have a ui prime part, which is the first derivative. And that turns out to be that. And this turns out to be minus that. Uh, there is no square because one of the squares cancel out. And 0, 0, we get 0. And so we also use Taylor's, Taylor series to expand this part, this part. Uh, this is also going to be 0. This is going to be just itself. And we also get 0. And this one, we also get 0. And only in, the, in this term, we get something that is proportional to delta x to the fourth. That means our approximation error, uh, I think, sorry, delta x to the fourth also divided by delta x squared, which gets to delta x squared, right? That means our approximation error is, we write it as big O times delta x to the fourth, uh, to, to the second, sorry, to the second, because the fourth cancels with the second. What this big O notation means is that as delta x goes to zero, the rate of decay of this truncation error is delta x squared. Okay, this means this is equal to a constant. Let me write down as c2 times x squared plus maybe another constant times delta x cubed plus maybe another constant times delta x fourth, etc. But we don't really care that much about c3, c4, etc. Because when delta x is small enough, all of these we call high order terms is going to be negligible compared to the delta x squared term. Right? So if you look at this truncation error, we'd like usually to plot it in a log log plot. In this log log plot, the x axis is our delta x. The y axis, let's say here, we used to denote the truncation error tau. Okay. And let's say our delta x is 1 over here, is 0 0.1 over here, is 0 0.01 over here, uh, 10 to the minus. 4 over here, oh, actually 3 over here, 10 to the minus 4 over here, 10 to the minus 5 over here. If when delta x is equal to 1, the truncation error is over here. When delta x decreases to point 0.1, maybe the truncation error is over here, but at some point, tau is going to decay when delta x is small enough, tau is going to decay like delta x squared. That rate of decay in a log log plot, what would it look like? What is going to be the slope? Two. It's going to be 2, yes. Which means, let's say if the decay, the correct decay rate starts from here, then when delta x becomes 0.01, what is going to be 
the area, what is going to be tau. So if you go over a factor of 10 over here, you should go over two factors of 10 in the y-axis, right? So you should get to here. So your decay rate should be like that, right? So that is, that is the correct line for tau being big O delta x squared. Okay. A similar analysis can be used to look at the solution error. And for example, in your project, you compare a numerical solution with analytical solution. And the difference, the difference between analytical and numerical solution can also be quantified in a similar way as you refine your grid. And if, for example, you know your uh, scheme is second order and your solution is second order, then as you refine the grid, as you increase the n, decrease the delta x, you should find your solution error to decay in that rate. And if you are careful, you should actually plot it using MATLAB and see if the slope is actually 2. If your slope is 1, that means you probably have a bug somewhere that makes your scheme not really second order. It's going to be a first order scheme. All right. For example, an example of a first order scheme can be seen as discretizing the first order derivative. Let me say I can the most uh, intuitive way to discretize it is ui plus 1 minus ui divided by delta x. I mean, one of the intuitive way to disc discretize it. Now, if you look at the approximation error, we have ui minus ui over delta x plus ui plus 1 over delta x. And we subtract this numerical approximation from the analytical derivative it tries to approximate. This is equal to tau. We do Taylor series, and this term is just itself. This term is ui over delta x plus ui times delta x, divided by delta x. So nothing, just a ui prime. All right? And we also have a second order derivative. It is going to be half like 2 factorial, which is 2, delta x times ui double prime, Oops. and the plus delta x squared over 6, that's 3 factorial, ui third derivative, etc. And here is 0. Any question about the Taylor series of ui plus 1? And I'm writing down very quickly, but, but once you... Once you start going into this class, you should able you should be able to do Taylor series analysis as quickly. It once you exercise it, it becomes uh, really natural. This is zero. This is just a minus u i prime. So this is at x i and zero zero etc. So if you add them together, look at tau. The first the first term cancels zero as it should be. The second term cancels 0, as it should be. The third term no longer cancels. So that is going to be the leading term in the truncation error. That is ui double prime times the half of second derivative of u. All right. So in this case, my tau is O what? just delta x, no square, all right? And if you look over here, if I have a truncation error that decays like delta x, what should I have? If I have truncation error decay like delta x, I should have a line that is of slope 1. If it's here, then as you decrease by a factor of 10, you should become, the tau should also decay by a factor of 10. So you should get a line that is shallower 
than the red line. Question? Um, if you approximated uh, EDX uh, uh, using UI plus one minus UI minus one divided by two delta X, wouldn't you get more cancellation than if you figured it out? That's a good point, right? So the question is, if I if I discretize this using instead of UI and U, UI plus one and UI, if I approximate using UI plus one and UI minus one, then I divide by two delta x. If you do the Taylor series again, it's a little bit more involved. You're going to find. I'm also going to cancel a U uh, delta X term. I'm going to get a discretization error that is proportional to delta X squared. You're right. The exercise is left at home. All right. So, so yeah, uh, if, you, if you want second order scheme in your project, for example, this is probably what you should be using.